what we are talking now is uh, uh, where the channel is beginning. In fact, the extraction of the river network is uh, fundamental for extracting the HRUs. We will not see uh, today exactly how to extract the HRUs because it is uh, connected also to the use of the, the hydrological model that we will see next week. But we have some fundamental, uh, uh, some fundamental concept illustrated here. So if you go, the story goes on here. If you look at the presentations, and uh, there is a fourth one we, which I will not talk about. It's about uh, some geomorphological implications of the analysis that we do, but we have. If you want, sometimes I will, uh, I will do the presentation, but that is not <laughs> actually necessary for us. So uh, there are, uh, let's say, three uh, particular methods for extracting the river networks uh, that we use. One use the contributing areas. The other one use a, a product of uh, uh, the slope and uh, the, the contributing area. And the third one uh, can use curvatures. And uh, all of them are implemented in the software that we have. But I, I have to say that usually uh, in the normal practice, hydrologists use, it just, to use just one. Maybe we can discuss discuss later on if it is important or not. Actually, there is a fourth method. And uh, uh, this fourth method uh, was uh, supported by Scott Trekham at the beginning, uh, 20 years ago, more or less. And uh, the idea is that uh, this is uh, how uh, drainage directions appear when we plot on a plane. And uh, we see, for instance, here we have some parallel behavior, which is due to the D8 type of analysis of the DEM that we saw yesterday. And the idea of Scott is that is just, yeah, okay, this is a, a, a sort of a tree, and uh, we start to prove the external leaves, the one that, that where, where you start. And uh, we, we do this pruning several times. For instance, here, we, pr we, we take away the first, uh, the first streams, then uh, it remains, for instance, this one, which is a, uh, which is a second order, and we take away the other <coughs> one, and so on. We, we prune the external external streams. If we prune the external streams up to an order, for instance four, we obtain an image like that, which kind of resembles the, uh, the river network. So you have to think that uh, we were here in 95, so uh, uh, the other, as the, uh, the other, indication of the river network uh, was uh, from maps. So uh, the question that uh, we uh, answered at that time was that these images that we are obtaining are similar to the one of the maps that we have. Uh, um, uh, actually, uh, it was realized that uh, uh, the, ma the map are not so objective as they pretend to be sometimes because uh, the cartographer, when he was drawing the, the blue lines, as they told, yeah, was kind of interpreting the landscape. For instance, here you have the, uh, the contour line, and you see that, uh, in a sense, also here, what appears is that. Uh, the start and the headwaters here are where the, the contour line are crenulated or crenulated, I don't know the English, the right English pronunciation. So actually the cartographer was 
following the control line and according to his knowledge and maybe some field surveys was uh, uh, drawing the blue lines and starting with contour granulation. Contour granulation, if you uh, remind uh, uh, the lecture, the talk by yesterday, contour granulation has to do with planar curvature. <coughs> so the principle can also, we, that's why I say we can distinguish where channel begins from some kind from the, the curvature. Here you can, here actually we have a different method. Uh, the other method is to say, okay, we can uh, go uh, measure the flow downhill, we can measure the how the eye we have a tower behind. So we establish a priori. We, we, we do some trials then let me say, for instance here, if we have 200 cells uh, on our head, then uh, uh, the river network stra uh, starts. This is easy from the point of view of the computer, that uh, because it's a, an easy way, we uh, choose a, 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 an area threshold and, and goes on. Then obviously we are still, uh, still to, to see if it this corresponds to reality. As you see, uh, part of the images are, are a little different, but uh, the, the, the answer is similar because in, in fact uh, the drainage directions has uh, some patterns that, uh, that are consistent and uh, persistent, let's say, for uh, at least for the higher uh, level uh, uh, part of the network. So, one method that I didn't mention at the beginning, this pruning method, the method based on, on the contributing areas. Uh, if we push the method of, of the contributing area, what we can do from the practical point of view is we have a, a network, we can say, okay, we put a, a threshold area of 30 pixel cells, 100 pixels, 500 pixels, and see how it varies. And then we decide uh, which is the network that we want, but which is actually the network that we want. The network that we want in, in practice should be uh, obtained by field surveys. Go on, on, on C and see where the channels really begin. And then we have also to think what, where the channel begins. What is a channel? Because we draw a, a blue line and we think that uh, in naively that, that the, the network is where there is water, but there is no water in torrents, for instance, in that water. So actually, uh, the definition of the network uh, can be roughly said when there are some geomorphic, geomorphic features that uh, uh, separate this part of the, the landscape from other parts. And we should go there. In, in, in this moment in contemporary um, science, what we should do could be taking some aerial photos, very resolved, we know we have 20, 10 centimeters photo, even from satellites, uh, uh, have a, uh, some machine learning tool that, uh, that we uh, teach to how to distinguish where the channels begin, and then analyzing the, uh, the, the images, and maybe comparing with also the, uh, these images too doing some merging of the, the things. But to my knowledge, nobody is doing <coughs> So here we see we have various, various things. Uh, the laziness that hydrologists have in, in doing the, these things, actually, is that at the end, uh, uh, an hydrologist uh, like me, like you, is, is not really interested to the, ge to the geomorph problem, but to uh, do the uh, flood forecasting, for instance. And to this respect, maybe 
having the network makes makes like this or make or made like this because anyway just minor river uh, uh, just minor pieces of the network disappear could be not so important at least if the scale is to to have one measure at the outlet of this catch so that's another question of the usual uh, how this can be useful so we can use the uh, an area threshold on, on the contributing area and uh, extract our network do some experiment to see the idea of what can be interesting for us in distracting the network i say okay this is not very much physical what is physical this is one image from the famous paper by david montgomery and bill dittich and says this is the head of a catchment you see, uh, when I was thinking to some geomorphic form, here you have grass, uh, here, here you have erosion, you have this abrupt start of the channel head where uh, you have no more, uh, no more uh, grass. Uh, evidently, uh, there is a physical process that starts the, this head. Uh, which is erosion or which is a failure which is the same thing at this level the, fa the, the small failure of the terrain in, in this particular case of soil and uh, the soil fail is transported away and we see this concave form how how large it is this is less than half a meter okay uh, is this general uh, it's quite general for uh, for uh, uh, soil soil covered landscapes, but for instance here in the Alps we we cannot recognize such forms. Usually we have a very steep slope where we have a rock. Then we have a, a part where a debris flow forms on steep slopes, and uh, where debris flow forms, then there starts erosion, and we have. Uh, our channel initiation. So it is at, at the very hand is the it, 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 it is the same mechanism of, of failing, but uh, from probably the the macro the macro thing is, is a little different from a soil covered landscape. So this could be not so gen general, but give the idea of what a channel head is. Another question from the geomorphic point of view is this. Is it stable? The bath that we used to have are uh, on paper fixed. Here you have a, a big storm and the channel heads go over. Then doesn't rain for a few months. Uh, you have a feeling of the channel head and the channel head is dis disappearing. So actually, the river networks, if you think more deeply, is moving in and out depending on the events that are happening. So it's not so fixed as a, uh, we can imagine. This is pretty interesting from the geomorphic point of view and for our friends geologists that go on these slopes and obviously uh, teach us a lot about processes going on. Uh, if the if we have a soil like those one, but even if we have a, something which is from from other type of process, the, the, the physical aspect uh, is uh, uh, connected to the shear stress that water does on, on the surface or the pressure inside the the soil cover in the first uh, in the in the first centimeters of the soil. Uh, one proxy of the uh, of this shear stress can be uh, proposed is proposed like this one by Montgomery and Dietrich, which is uh, the stress is given by is proportional to the total contributing area you have uh, on your 
uphill. Uh, uh, this is uh, as a surrogate for the discharge because the, pro the real process is discharge of water. But as surrogate of discharge, we use a physical, uh, topographical aspect, which is area. Then we have uh, a, a, a that B. That B is uh, the contour length. We will see later what exactly it is. Uh, when we have the water flowing, this water is flow to a section. Uh, this section uh, can be larger or smaller in a certain point and uh, uh, there is a density of the, of the uh, of density of, of discharge let's say for unit length and this is also creating part of the stress the other is, uh, it, it is it, uh, the stress is also proportional to slope so uh, uh, the good thing here is here that apart from the a coefficient that we have in front, uh, we can measure A uh, from our DEM. Uh, uh, we can have a way to estimate B, uh, how much water concentrates <coughs> in, in that point, and we can measure also the, 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 the gradient and slope. Here we can for the question uh, we had yesterday, the, the modulus of the gradient of the slope is also the tangent of the angle of the slope. Here another image, historic image, I would say, because it's from a, a very early presentation of the Victor Bottom, but uh, the concept is also in the paper by Montgomery and Dietrich. And see, uh, we have a headwater catchment. He has depicted through contour lines, not the grid size as we we use. That is actually a problem. Or uh, we have to transpose the, the concept. You see, how is the catchment, uh, the the headwater? At the very top, uh, the headwater is convex. Uh, water is diverging here. The flow of water here is divergent. But then it's converging. So here the water is converging. The A over B is increasing. The discharge is increasing. The stress is enormously increasing. And the finally is enough to start the headwater. The headwater here. So here starts the 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 channels. We have also <coughs> another hill slope here, which is different actually, because here you see it's quite planar. You see from the contour line, it's more or less parallel. That's the water is not concentrating enough, enough to start a new head, a new head, a new channel. So here we don't, we don't have any channel starting, and there we have uh, the channel starting. It, uh, the idea is then to use this information and information like this to, to make the channels begin. More physical than simply selecting the area threshold. In this work always uh, by Montgomery and Dietrich, more than 20 years ago, uh, Montgomery and Dietrich uses uh, uh, the same concept, there A is my AT, S is my nabla Z, the, the slope, and B is the, is the minor. Okay, we have the SB, they choose the cell size, the side of the cells, more or less. And we compare the USGS blue lines, meaning the maps, doing by cartographers, and uh, the value of the threshold, the, the combined threshold, and see the differences in between. Uh, in their research, they also see that uh, um, uh, the channels, in a sense, are also uh, ephemeral, I uh, already said, but also you have starting of the channels, and then everything is buried by diffusion processes in the hill slope, and then the channels <coughs> start again. 
and so on. So the channels in principle is not continuous. Uh, for what regards uh, the approach we have in calculating B, <laughs> we are using some differential, uh, uh, differential, uh, uh, differential process, uh, some differential concept. We have here, let's say, the beginning of the cells. This is the length of the cell, and uh, we, if we look at the and, and we look at the convergence of uh, of the flow lines at the two sides of the cell and we use it as we not the side of the cells but the approximation of the 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 part included I need the can I go with my <laughs> shoes on the, this chair <laughs> Then I clean it, you know, you got, our B is this one, okay. <laughs> this helps us to, uh, to, um, to have, to distinguish uh, where we have, uh, uh, to use curvatures for, for making, the, uh, for making the, the channel starts. Meaning we don't, uh, in, the, in the process of calculating the a proxy of the shear stress, we use this as B, not this as B, and therefore we use the, the some information that comes from uh, curvatures. In our in our equation here, B is actually a function of curvatures. So there is a, a first to extract the uh, this is actually B this is a map of B just B how much convergence there is uh, there is in the, in the process meaning the, uh, this uh, actually is A the area the total contributing area divided by B but B is calculated in this way. And so here, you, what, what you see is that the kind of channels come out very, very, very evident here with A over B. Meaning that the idea that uh, is the sheer stress <coughs> uh, doing these things uh, can be correct. It could not always be the, this case. There is a work uh, made by some Italian colleague, Berlandini, uh, Taroli, others uh, very recently <coughs> in some uh, alpine catchment where they <coughs> kind of dispute this thing. They went on the field and they measured where the channels are there and are those dot points. And then they analyzed various methods and uh, to, to, to understand where the, the channels begin. And they say maybe uh, threshold areas in some cases still works well. Because probably we don't, we don't say the full story about channel initiation, or at least the, the full story is different in different contexts. So with this question in mind, what we, we can do? We first get the network. Ah, you see that this extract network, the name of the uh, programs that we use for doing this. Uh, we get the links. What is a link in a network? It's a, a piece of the network between two uh, subsequent nodes. Uh, uh, so we have the links of the network. We look at which part of the landscape flow into that link, we number those parts and we call them hill slope. And uh, we, extract, uh, uh, we extract all the link in the, in the hill slope and when we have extracted the network then we have a partition of the catchment like this one where color uh, represent different, different Hills. Let's say 
Uh, one can argue that actually the thing is a little bit more complicated than that because uh, I just finished a few minutes ago to tell you that some, uh, somehow the head water is kind of different of lateral flow. So uh, each of our hill slope could be at least divided from the geomorphic point of view in three parts, the head water and the lateral water flowing into the, the channel. First order channel derived from the whole way to name these things from the Strahler or Horton ordering. Maybe I can recover this concept later. And here we have a higher order channel. So that's more or less how we can do separation of the of the channel and the, uh, from the separation of the channel distinguishing the hill slope and using hill slope as uh, our units of uh, analysis for the river networks. From the hydrological point of view, actually there are people arguing now that maybe there is in, even inside the, the hill slope for various reasons that we can distinguish sub-regions. For instance, in more convex part on concave part can uh, from the modeling point of view acts differently or more in more similar manner some some apart and more complicated parts other. Actually it is not exactly the same for all the processes. And uh, but we will discuss these topics uh, when we will be doing the ideological modeling. <coughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.